Diane Schuler. On July 26, 2009, Diane Schuler packed up the campsite at Hunter Lake in Parksville, New York, where her family had spent the weekend. With her were her husband, Daniel, their two children, and three of her nieces. Diane and the children loaded up in a van belonging to her brother, Warren Hant, father to three of the girls in the van. Daniel and the family dog got into his truck and the group headed home to West Babylon. They left the campsite at approximately 9.30 a.m. Half an hour down the road, everyone stopped for breakfast at McDonald's. The group left the McDonald's at around 10.30 a.m. Approximately 15 minutes later, Diane pulled into a gas station and asked the clerk for pain medicine. The convenience store didn't have what she asked for and Diane left. Just after 11.30 a.m., Diane called her brother to tell him that she was running late because there was heavy traffic. Other drivers remember Diane's van because she was tailgating other cars, honking her horn and driving aggressively. 15 minutes after Diane called her brother, the van was seen pulled over on the side of the road. Passers-by said that Diane was standing outside of the vehicle and it appeared as though she was vomiting. Just after noon, Diane received a call from her sister-in-law, Jackie, mother of three of the girls in the van. Within 30 minutes of this phone call, the van was seen at a rest stop. Again, passers-by reported that Diane looked as though she was throwing up. Just before 1 p.m., 8-year-old Emma, the oldest of the children in the car, called her parents. She said that Diane was having trouble seeing the road and she was talking strangely. Diane got on the phone and said she felt strange and couldn't see. Warren told her to stay where she was and he would come find them. The phone call lasted less than four minutes and then they were disconnected. After the call, Diane got back on the road. There were three calls made from her phone, but they seemed to be misdialed. At approximately 1.30 p.m., people started calling 911 to report a van going the wrong way on an exit ramp of the Taconic State Parkway. The calls continued as the van sped at over 80 miles per hour going south in the northbound passing lane. After traveling for almost two miles in the wrong direction, the van collided without slowing down into an SUV. The van rolled down an embankment and burst into flames. Witnesses pushed the van upright and pulled Diane and the children from the van. It appeared that none of the children were restrained at the time of the collision. Diane, her daughter, and two of her nieces were killed instantly. The third niece died later at the hospital. Diane and Daniel's five-year-old son was the only passenger of the van to survive. He suffered head trauma and broken bones. All three men in the SUV were killed. A toxicology report revealed that Diane's blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit and there was undigested alcohol still in her stomach. She also tested positive for high levels of THC. The medical examiner concluded that she may have smoked marijuana within an hour of her death. Good Samaritans that helped to remove Diane and her family from the van claimed to have seen a broken vodka bottle inside. Almost immediately, Daniel disputed the findings. Daniel began to claim that Diane must have experienced some sort of medical event while driving that caused the crash. The medical examiner stated that the autopsy showed no sign of such a medical issue. In 2009, the family of two of the men killed in the SUV sued Diane's estate and Warren for wanton, willful, and reckless conduct. 
it was required that Warren be included in the suit because he owned the van. Jackie sued Daniel in 2011. She stated that her daughter suffered terror, fear of impending death, extreme horror, fright, and mental anguish. Later, Daniel sued the state of New York for failure to maintain safe roads. He also sued Warren because he was the owner of the van Diane had been driving. Each of these lawsuits has been settled or dropped. All information has been sealed by the court. A private investigation into the crash was paid for by Daniel and his lawyer. The results mirrored the findings of the medical examiner. Daniel still refuses to accept them. In the wake of this tragedy, Warren and Jackie founded the Hans Family Foundation that developed self-esteem programs for girls. Visit HansFamilyFoundation.org for more information. Please visit www.icantbelieveitsnonfiction.com and don't forget to subscribe.